Good day, my name is Blue Suit, and today I'll be talking about my review of the gorgeous island-inspired crafting farm life adventure on the high seas known as Summer in Mara. In Summer in Mara, you play as Koa, a young orphan girl rescued by the mysterious yet caring Yaya Haku. Granny Haku raises the young girl alone on her island, teaching her the value of nature, living off the land, and always providing help to those in need. It'll be up to you to see your island flourish and protect the seas of Mara from those who would exploit her bounty. At its core, it's a crafting game, but it's far more story-driven than any of the other titles of the genre. Where most games will give you a five-minute tutorial and set you loose to progress in whatever direction you want, Summer in Mara has a much more deliberate and often linear progression style. New crafting recipes are usually only unlocked by progressing the various storylines, which are definitely the game's defining achievement. Wonderfully written, with amazing artwork, the stories in Summer and Mara kept me hooked throughout the entire 40-ish hour campaign. There are a couple dozen characters, and each one from the rival restaurant workers to the pirate lords to the outcasts found a way to be special and unique in their own way, and their stories all intersected on the message that everyone and everything in Mara is connected and deserves respect. It's the first time in a crafting game where I was actually more excited to see how the characters developed than I was to see what new recipes I could find. Which is a big deal because there are so many recipes, items, and upgrades to find. The actual quests themselves, however, can get quite repetitive. With no combat in the game, every single mission is a fetch quest. Hey Koa, go get this and take it to so-and-so was 95% of the over 300 quests in the game with the occasional boat race thrown in. It outlines the gameplay loop well. You pick up a bunch of quests in the main city of Qualys and sail around the map gathering everything you need, and finally returning to see how you've affected the cast. The size of the game is another huge win for Summer and Mara. When I first played the prologue, I didn't even know that you could leave your little island. Again, when I got to the city of Qualys, I had expected that was all. But then Koa gets her boat upgraded a couple more times, and with each upgrade, the map gets bigger and bigger. It doesn't take long before you're spending more time away exploring than you are at home. And the map itself is segmented into 36 quadrants, with most having an island of its own. Each with a specific purpose, whether it be to refuel or collect a specific mineral or plant, or just to lie dormant until a specific part of the story. There are a few genre staples that are missing from Summer and Mara that players should be aware of before they pick it up. The first, as I mentioned, is a lack of combat. Summer and Mara is a game about creating, not destroying, so don't expect to start crafting weapons for yourself or diving into any dungeons here. The second is the absence of cooperative play. It would have been nice to invite other players to my island to show off my tiki torches, but it wouldn't have really fit in with the rest of the game. I really enjoyed the single player experience because the story is so immersive and often emotional that having another human player around would have undoubtedly diminished that. All of the crafting in the game takes place on your island, and because the recipes are gated behind quests, it can often make you feel like you're doing something wrong. For a long time I thought that flour just didn't actually exist in the game because no one sold it at the time and I couldn't craft it or find it. It also gives the feeling that you never really leave the intro. Where most crafting games will give you everything you need at the start of the game, Summer and Mara slowly hands you recipes, even into the game's final quests. On the one hand, it does a good job of making you finish all of the great storylines, but on the other, it really takes away any chance of replayability. Once you beat the game once, the only real incentive for starting over is experiencing the story again. Chibig Studios is known for making charming, relaxing, single-player adventures with strong narratives, and this is their biggest success yet. Summer and Mara ended up surprising me on so many levels, from the scope of the game to the richness of the characters. There's a lot to love here. There's a rumor going that it's going to cost in the ballpark of $20 when it releases on June 16th for PS4, Steam, and Nintendo Switch. This is an outrageously low price for this game. There is a fair bit of repetition, as with any crafting game, but considering how great the story, the artwork, and the music all are, I feel very comfortable valuing Summer and Mara at $36. I would recommend it to anyone who's a fan of the crafting genre who might also be looking for something that actually tells a great story. 
I hope you enjoyed this review of Summer and Mara. Come see me on Twitch where you can watch our reviews in progress five nights a week. As always, don't forget to like, subscribe, and let me know in the comments what you thought about it. Until next time, peace!